The Supreme Court today appointed two senior lawyers to talk to the protesters at Shaheen Bagh in Delhi, who've been on a sit-in for more than two months against the Citizenship Act and the NRC. Senior advocates Sanjay Hegde and Sadhna Ramachandran will meet the protesters to try to persuade them to continue their agitation at another location so that commuters are not hassled because of road blockades. Former Chief Information Commissioner Wajahat Habibullah will also help them in the task. The court said today that the right to protest is a fundamental right, but also said there have to be lines and boundaries and some method so that traffic flow is free. The two-judge bench of the Supreme Court, while hearing a plea against Shaheen Bagh protests blocking a key road, refused to stop the protest, saying right to protest is a fundamental right. During the hearing, the court commented, it's not a pleasant task we have taken upon us. The executive might have taken it earlier. Let us be practical. A lot of it is generated. We want to resolve this issue. If nothing works out, we will leave it to the authorities. But we are hopeful for a solution. The court underscored the need for balance between flow of traffic and expression of views. What is troubling us is blocking the public road, to which the Solicitor General Tushar Mehta says there is complete blockade on the road. We have just blocked a small part of the road. Okay. And from first day, we allow ambulance to go through the other side of the road. As well as the ambulance and the school bus. Uh, school bus. Now we also have informed them that uh, the public trans traffic also can go through uh, that way. Instead, the court appointed a team of two advocates, Sadhana Ramachandran and Sanjay Hegde, as interlocutors. And retired bureaucrat Vajahat Habibullah, who was also a petitioner supporting the protesters to assist them. This protest has been on in the southeast corner of Delhi since December the 16th. Led primarily by women, they say they won't end their protest till government repeals Citizenship Amendment Act. I wanted to make a direct direction to the direct issue because it's been a long time. One week is a lot of time, but Sanjay Hegde Ji wants to make it, so I can do it in two or three days. Apart from Vajahat Habibullah, the other petitioner supporting the protesters is Chandrasekhar Azad, who says his followers, the scheduled castes, will also suffer from the Citizenship Amendment Act. Though two senior ministers of the centre government, Amit Shah and Ravi Shankar Prasad, had said that they are ready to talk with the Shaheen Bagh protesters, both are yet to walk the talk. Now, Supreme Court, by appointing mediators to speak with Shaheen Bagh protesters, has given a message to the government that dialogue is the way forward. With Arunachalam Vaidyanathan and camera person Rakesh Singh, this is Arvind Gunasega for NDTV. Well, there have been other Shaheen Bagh type protests that have cropped up in different parts of the country. There's one in Bangalore and there's one here in Chennai. Uh, this is an anti-citizenship act protest that has been going on for some time. And today, a Chennai couple decided to get married at the protest site. So love in the time of protests does happen as well. Well, let's go straight across to our panelists this evening. Vajahat Habibullah, the former Chief Information Commissioner, joining us here in the studio. One of those asked by the Supreme Court to find a way to talk to the protesters. We have uh, Natasha Badwar, activist, journalist, writer, uh, joining us this evening. And Mr. Vivek Reddy of the BJP joining us from Bangalore tonight. Mr. Habibullah, to you first. What are you going to do now that you've been assigned this task by, by the court? What did you think of what the court has said? Well, today? I've just learned to this. As you mentioned, I'm also among the petitioners. Uh, we were not actually, we, we, uh, the, the petition really was uh, in order to ensure that uh, the situation did not deteriorate into any kind of violence and the rights of the protesters were respected. And I'm very, very glad to see that uh, so far as that is concerned, the Honorable Supreme Court has held that the uh, right to protest is a fundamental right. Now, where do we go from here? I will have to await a further discussion with, uh, with, with the interlocutors uh, who have been mentioned. Uh, nobody has uh, so far contacted me. I've only learned of this decision today. Well, N Natasha Badwar, you know, one of the things uh, uh, you know, that stood out in what the court said today was that you ha there is a fundamental right to protest, but not a right to block roads. There should be a free flow of traffic. There have been, however, conflicting reports on what exactly is blo blocking those roads. One has seen plenty of reports that uh, it's actually the police that have cordoned off uh, arterial roads in the area. And, and it's not the protesters which are blocking traffic, but the fact that other roads which actually do give good alternative routes to people, 
those have been blocked and that's what's causing the jams. Absolutely. It uh, doesn't take rocket science to figure out uh, that what has actually created this blockade between Noida and Delhi is the blocking of all the alternate, alternate routes. Uh, there is a route that goes along the Yamuna, um, you know, through Okhla that has been blocked. The other half of the Shaheen Bagh road on which no protester is sitting has also been blocked preemptively. And you know, Nidhi, uh, those of us who are in Delhi, we have experienced this ourselves. These roads were blocked before the Shaheen Bagh protesters sat on the road. In fact, Shaheen Bagh protesters managed to sit on this highway of a road, this, uh, you know, which has heavy traffic all the time, because it had been blocked by the police. It was absolutely empty when the protesters went and sat down on it. And after that, relentlessly, the Delhi police has refused to open the alternate routes. So uh, we really need to look at the practical aspect of what is causing this traffic to clog up between Noida and Delhi. But the bigger question here, Natasha, is, you know, what, what Shaheen Bagh has come to symbolize and why we are seeing, in your view, uh, similar sit-ins that have now, you know, come up in different parts of the country, whether it's in Kolkata, in Bangalore, in Chennai now, in uh, and, and in Lucknow. And I want to ask you and Mr. Habibullah about that before I come to Mr. Reddy, that, that just the, the symbolism of what Shaheen Bagh has come to represent, despite, I think, a lot of attempts to vilify uh, those protests. You know, what to you is, is, is their representation truly Absolutely. about? Absolutely. So Shaheen Bagh has become one of the greatest moments in Indian democracy, in a sense, you know. The, when the women first sat down in Shaheen Bagh, there was a sense of disbelief. Has this really happened? Are, are these, you know, do these people know what they're talking about? There was a lot of conjecture. But more and more people from the rest of Delhi's colonies began to visit and we began to get a sense of how deep the conviction of the protesters is and how deep their courage is. And that has inspired 22 other pro sit-in protests in Delhi itself. In fact, over the last three days, there's been a Mahila Ekta Yatra that decided, you know, the, that the rest of the women who are not sitting in protests, who do not have uh, protests in their own colonies, get together and visit each of these uh, protest sites. And each of these is a very vibrant place. Uh, it's, it's almost like a, you know, a, a cultural uh, hub. There is uh, wall painting, there are libraries, there are children's storytelling going on, there is singing, there is so much solidarity. Uh, in Nizamuddin, uh, Basant Panchmi was celebrated at the protest site. No, and you know, that has, you're like right. you said, uh, inspired but you Ahmedabad, know, there's also Baroda. Been, Natasha, there's also been criticism, and I'll take that to Mr. Habibullah, which is that, for instance, you had the very, very tragic incident of the infant who died uh, at Shaheen Bagh. The mother said she had no choice but to bring her child to the site of the protests. It was cold. The child died. The Supreme Court actually made a mention of that as well separately. Uh, there have been accusations of, at times, uh, inappropriate slogans being raised, uh, you know, by, by, by those on the other side of the ideological divide. Uh, how, how would you look at some of that criticism that Shaheen Bagh has also drawn? No, but as uh, the basic point is that the, 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 the right to protest has to be peaceful. That is a right that everybody enjoys and they have a right to express it. As a former administrator, uh, I would say that the way out of that, and it, which also deals with the question that you've raised with the, uh, with the unacceptable slogans and things being raised, an administrator is expected to go and visit the people who are protesting and ask them, what is your problem? That is, I think, basic administration. In this case, it has not happened. So it's no use saying that they're saying this and they're saying that. Has anybody approached them, sought to advise them? They are people, they are people of this country, they have voted, they, are, they have all the rights of a citizen. Therefore, a government that is elected by those people should also exercise its responsibility and recognize its duties. Our Honorable Prime Minister has often spoken of this point of the rights 
being respected, but there are also duties. But where the rights and duties are, uh, certainly devolve on the citizen, the, there are rights which the government has, but the government also has duties. Let me take that to Mr. Reddy. That Mr. Reddy today, uh, if you look at how the Supreme Court has handled it, Yes, you know, it said that right to protest is a fundamental right, but there is, at the same time, the court is trying to look for a way out. The court has appointed mediators to talk to the protesters to find a way in which they can continue their protests, and yet any concerns that people have about traffic are also addressed. Do you not think that this is what the government should have done earlier, rather than have the court stepping in and doing it? Well, I think, Nidhi, first of all, there cannot be a stubborn protest on the national highway. It can't be there at all because that is not the place one has to protest. The right to protest exists, but as you pointed out, the right to protest is at a place where it will not affect public. It will not affect public communication and travel. So this is an issue perhaps the protesters must realize that they will have to move over to places which are more safe, which do not obstruct traffic, which do not obstruct the public from moving and which does not obstruct the transportation because that is very vital. Now, the, as a sequel to that, I think the Supreme Court has asked them whether they can peaceably move out or whether the interlocutors can talk to them. I think this is a right move. The point is, Nidhi, why Shaheen Bagh is not gaining the overall support of the people of this nation is Mr. due to Reddy, certain dissonant voices question. that have come from Shaheen Bagh. My, my question such was as, that should such the as government have tried Azadi, to go and talk such to as the break up Assam, Mr. Reddy, sorry, who, my question who, who was different. Who is to answer this and what are the people of India witnessing? No, no, one second. My question was The people was of different. India are shocked to my see question was, that peaceable protests are converted into Jinnawali Azadis. One second. They, they're still by and large peaceful. How could it peaceful. be? I mean, that they're also still, needs to be asked. They are peaceful protests, right? Uh, Mr. Reddy, my question is different. My well, question what, is, do you think... What does peace mean when you want Jinnawali Azadis? One second, one second. Not everybody has chanted that hand. kind of slogan. Let's mean? not tarnish the entire protest because of one slogan that someone may have chanted at many days ago. I'm asking well, a different what you believe, question. But I am asking able to Mr. Reddy that should the government have tried to reach out and meet the protesters. Mr. Amit Shah actually said the other day in an interview to another TV channel that he was willing to meet the protesters. They can come to his house and meet them. And when they tried to do that, they were not given an audience. So I'm just asking that do you think the government should have made an effort, as Mr. Habibullah was saying, to try and talk to them to understand their concerns? Well, I, well, I think the government, first of all, on this question, I think the government has clarified very clearly that this is a, not an act that will take away citizenship. Unfortunately, people have been misled. The political narrative and the politicians of the opposite parties are raising various issues. They are bringing up lies and falsities to say that, look here, your citizenship will go, there will be NPR and all these things. The Prime Minister has clarified very clearly that, look here, this is not an act that takes away citizenship and Indian Muslims need not be worried at all. That's the word given. Now, when it is so clearly stated, I'm wondering why the protesters still want to stick to their stand. Why what doesn't are they someone for? go and talk to them? We Mr. really Reddy. don't know what they're fighting for. Why didn't the Home Minister meet them the other well, it day has when been they very wanted clearly to go and stated. meet him? He invited them. It will happen. I think Mr. Okay. Ravicha has very clearly indicated that he would be willing to meet them. At an appropriate place, he will meet them. But the protesters must realize that they cannot block roads, that national highways are not places where they sit in stubbornly and prevent traffic from moving. They will have to clear out. I think if they clear out, the government will be willing to talk. They, have, they will have to go to places where they don't disturb the public, when they don't disturb so, so, the society. That is what is to be needed today. That is N what is Natasha, needed today. Natasha, Unfortunately, if you could just this is of... not the sort of... This the, is the not the start of the tenor okay. of the protest, Nidhi. No, no, the, I'm the very point sorry is, to say. I remember, uh, Natasha, I, re be okay, one second, Mr. Reddy. How can I remember, be a peaceable protest? I remember if it is anti when India? the protests in Delhi happened, when the Nirbhaya gang rape happened, and we covered that story. And people were out in large numbers, uh, Natasha, you remember, on the streets of Delhi. And the biggest criticism that Sheila Dixit Absolutely. and the Congress government yeah. at the center faced at that time is that nobody came out to meet those who were protesting. Nobody came out and spoke to them. And I find it surprising. Let me tell that you the, one, no, one second, Mr. Reddy, one second. I'll come back to you. So I find it surprising today that those people who are at the forefront of that criticism of a lack of outreach by the center back then are doing exactly the same now. Natasha. Absolutely. And I mean, look at the proximity of Shaheen Bagh to Jamia University. 
No, and no. today uh, this long video uh, from the CCTV cameras of Jamia Library has come out, which shows how brutally the Delhi police is lati charging students inside the library. Yesterday there was another video that came out. Now these are also wounds that have been inflicted on the people of India by the police, by people who have taken an oath on the constitution to protect the people. So when, you know, and first of all, let's stop even calling it a national highway. It's not a national highway. It's a road. And they, are, they have blocked half the road. The other half of the road is free. Ambulances are passing. Marriage processions are passing. Funeral processions have been passing. Uh, protesters are giving them the right of way. And these people, uh, not only the people in Shaheen Bagh, but in every sit-in protest, in every rally, which is drawing lakhs of people, People are asking questions about the CAA, about NPR, about NRC. We have seen what has happened in Assam. There are people in uh, detention camps in Assam. There are hundreds of Bengali-speaking Muslims and Hindus, lakhs of them, who have been left out of the NRC. Now, this has created a very valid insecurity in people. And sure, we expect the administration as well as the government to come and talk to us. Mr. Habibullah, just on, on you know... You know, if the Prime Minister is willing to talk from Red Fort, he should yeah. come to Jamia and speak to people. Just on, you know, what these protests, though, have meant for our democracy, in your view. Again, I come to that point, this, this constant attempt at vilification, again, you know, trying to paint all protests as sort of anti-national. Uh, you, you, you pick a slogan out and, and sort of paint everyone with the same brush, etc. What does that tell you about our tolerance for dissent at the moment. You see, when government does this, I mean, I have been in government, it shows a kind of defensive mechanism, self-defense. No, no, let's condemn all, our, all those who criticize us. The government has, uh, if the government has nothing to hide, and I do believe that the government uh, has, has, has passed these laws with, full, uh, with, with good intentions, let them explain it to people. It's no use explaining it from the ramparts to the red fort. One comes and talks to people. One calls, uh, answers their questions. That is how a democratic system works. It's no use saying that, well, he has announced this and he has said that. Because the question is a dialogue, and that is why the Honorable Supreme Court has now asked that there should be a dialogue. What, 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 what they have done by appointing these interlocutors is to initiate a dialogue. I think that this dialogue in itself, this conversation in itself, will probably not lead to the kind of results that the Supreme Court is wanting. But the fact is the political leadership should then take it up from there. And yeah. talk to, I mean, they're talking to whom? They're talking to their own constituents, the people of India, who voted them to power. Now, when you've been voted to by, by certain sectors, by, by the people of India to power, surely it becomes your responsibility to then be ready to answer their questions. And that is what the right to information is. And so the government has been repeatedly in its manifesto. The BJP had made transparency and accountability the basic tenets of its manifesto. So all that is asked for is transparency and accountability. Come and talk. Mr. Reddy, it's okay to talk to your own people? Well, I think, first of all, let me tell you, I was trying to clarify, sure. Nidhi. I heard what the others said. There have been various protests throughout the history of India, particularly independent India's. You have JP's movement, you have Anna Hazare's movement, you have various other movements, you have agricultural peasant, peasant protests throughout, throughout India in various states. But the real difference that we find between other protest movements and this is that nowhere in these previous movements has any single word come out against the nation. Nowhere in this movement has there been a contemplation, no, even an illusion of breaking India. Nowhere in these movements have they said, Jinnah Wali Azadi. Mr. Reddy, well, where are these true. voices coming from? That's it came from true. the very epicenter. Th no, I'm sorry, protest. that's not correct, Mr. Why Reddy. Why did it come from the epicenter the of these protests? The so anthem. long as... So long, no, you may say... You no, no, may we, say we have covered these true, protests every true. day. It was they there. Been they have been waiting the There is a person flag. arrested They've for that. They have been carrying the map of there India. There is Sarjul Islam is arrested for that. Republic Day in large numbers. But Sarjul Islam is arrested for that. He wanted an investigation for sedition. What else? Does now, he represent the all those panelists. women sitting there? Want to, you know, Does push he represent over all things. those women sitting they there? Simply want Why to are you tarnishing an entire protest? They really Mr. don't Reddy. know. I'm very sad. I'm sorry. So am I. They really don't know what a united India means. 
they really don't have the idea of nationalism it if you really had the idea of nationalism see, you would by, never tolerate abusing but the abusing point the other side the other panel wants to be tolerant they say it is okay the side, all right it is their way but let me tell you one thing let me tell you one thing please i didn't talk when you spoke let me tell you one thing there can't be a more dangerous thing than to than to chant slogans against the country well i i would again like to disabuse you of that please correct that Yeah, I would Please like to disabuse. Yes, that. well, the Supreme Court and, of India today did not why. call them anti-national. The Supreme Court of India today, neither did the government stand up in the Supreme the Court. Mr. Reddy, you are a lawyer. Mr. Tushar Mehta, the Solicitor the General, did not tell the Supreme country. Court that they are anti-national. He did not That's accuse them of breaking the unity of India. This is something you seem to be doing. It doesn't seem to be something the centre is telling well, the Supreme Court. Well, what you Court. spoke, what they spoke, what they chanted, why, what they recited. Why didn't the government say that in the Supreme Court? What ultimately came out of the very AP centre? They should have said it, Mr. Reddy. Why no. is Nidhi Rajan deciding it? Why is Nidhi Rajan deciding it? I am not. The government should have said it. We are reporting the story every day. What has been chanted there? That is there for the people of India to see. Don't tarnish the entire it. thing. They say I think we should all go for vipassana. You know, they will seriously. decide it. Let's all calm down. And who down. is creating these insecurities? Natasha, the insecurities are created by our Natasha, politicians. Natasha, quick last word to you. And people who want to take advantage of the situation. Uh, well, I wish the I wish the government was so concerned as you are and said that in the Supreme Court, but they didn't anyway. Natasha, <laughs> this movement is a reclamation of the idea of India. I mean, what are we celebrating? We are celebrating the Constitution of India. it is the national anthem that is being sung at every protest site the national flag in the hands of children of the women people are painting the flag on their face this movement is entirely about protecting the core of the constitution you know we have never had such a celebratory what 26th core? january is going to lose as we did what this core? year i don't understand valentine's day we are all sending love messages to the prime minister Nobody so is losing citizenship. So this is about man. solidarity, Nobody about fraternity, about reclaiming that we are, are going to not be divided. All right. What is well, the core well, of the constitution that is lost? Well, Mr. Reddy, I there think they are no trying to send though. you a Valentine's card the as well. The opposition is not, not get... visiting these sites either. The opposition is not doing anything. It yeah. is the people understanding what is going on. Artificially created. Means. Artificially well, well, created all right, fears. All right. Well, if you're going to, to live in denial, I have to say, thankfully, the Supreme Court has handled. Finally, this. we have a in, movement in a much... that is organically created. Yeah. Let's let's acknowledge let's acknowledge that. that. All right. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us, Mr. Habibullah. Absolutely. Good luck as you try to sort of mediate. I'm sure something will work out. I'm sure something will. Good luck with that.